good morning everyone in today's video i'll be discussing on set classical sets properties and operations of classical set let's get started what is a set set is a collection of objects which share certain characteristics so the example of sets are set of all positive integers set of all states in india okay we can give examples like this or otherwise set of all planets in solar system so these are all the examples for the set so we can write the sets with specifying with a square bracket or a curly braces okay so the mathematical representation of a set is so a, a is a set which contains vowels so a e i o u which will be enclosed in curly braces this is how we will be representing a set okay and we can also give some other examples like set of all days in a week this is also a set okay then what is a classical set or crisp set classical set or crisp set it is also a set which is a collection of distinct objects okay so if the order of elements are changed in the set it does not make any changes in the set if you are going to change any order in the set it does not make any sense okay now we will see the types of sets so there are several types of sets the first one is finite set finite set is a set which contains definite number of elements so for example we can write this set in a set builder form s will be equal to x such that x belongs to natural number and it will have a number between 70 and 50 so what is how many numbers are there between 50 and 70 there are 20 numbers so we can say that this set s yes, contains the numbers between 50 and 70 so it is a definite number of elements so we can say this set to be a finite set next is infinite set what is infinite set it is also x that belongs to natural number and x that is greater than 10 so if x if i specify x is greater than 10 there are n number of numbers above 10 so it is infinite so a set which contains infinite number of elements then that set is called as infinite set third type is subset so here we let uh, let's take this example x contains the element 1 2 3 4 5 and y contains the element 1 and 2 so we can say that y is a subset of x so we can represent the subset by this symbol okay so we can say all the elements in y it is uh, it is in the it is in the set x so y is a subset of x okay this is subset next is proper subset proper subset is also same as subset the but only one difference is that subset of but not equal to but here what happens in subset is here y can be equal to x but in case of proper subset y cannot be equal to x so if x contains the elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 and y contains the element 1 and 2 then we can say y is a subset and also it is a proper subset subset of x what do, what is the difference between proper subset and subset is proper subset y contains the element less than x but not equal to x that is is the difference between subset and proper subset fifth type is universal set universal set means it is a collection of all elements so we can represent this universal set by u next is empty set or null set it is represented by pi so if the empty set contains no element then it is called as empty set so we can write x will be equal to x such that x belongs to natural number and x contains if x lies between 8 and 8 there is no number between 8 and 8 so the value for the set x will be pi so it is an empty set okay next is equal set what is equal set equal set means if two sets contain the same number of elements okay then we can say it is an equal set so in this a contains 1 2 and 6 and b also contains the same element 6 1 and 2 so we can say it is the equal set next set is singleton set or unit set so here if you see this in this set it contains only one element see here x belongs to natural number and x contains an element between 7 and 9 so the what is a number which which is between 7 and 9 only 8 is there 
so it contains only one element so it is called a singleton set or otherwise it is called unit set next one is equivalent set what is equivalent set equivalent set means see here like 1 to a contains elements 1 to 1 6 b contains 16 17 and 22 so if both the sets have same number of elements so for example here the number of elements is 3 and here the number of elements is 3 so we can say both the sets are equivalent set so we can represent this numbers by this symbol we can use this to represent the cardinality cardinality of a will be equal to cardinality of b that is equal to 3 so these are all the types of sets next we see what all the operations you can perform on classical set so it is called as classical set or otherwise it is called as crisp set so there are four operations you can perform on this classical set one is union intersection complement and difference so these four operations you can perform coming to this union union is represented by a union b all these operations you have already studied in mathematics okay so i am i am explaining it because you will be using all these operations in fuzzy logic okay that is why i am explaining all these operations to you a union b that is x which contains the elements in a or it contains the elements in b so what is union union of a set is set of elements which are in a in b or in both in a and b so we can say that a union b is it contains elements of a and also contains elements of b this is your union so you are adding both the elements of a and b so we can uh, for example a contains element 10 11 and 12 b contains element 13 and 14 what is a union b a union b it's a combination of both a and b so it is 10 11 12 13 and 14 okay if the common elements occur suppose a contains element 13 here only one time the common element will occur only once in your union set next is intersection set intersection set is denoted by the symbol this symbol okay and this is a set of elements which are in both a and b so we can write like this x belongs to a and x belongs to b so which should be both in a and b so we can write the diagram we can draw the diagram like this so those elements which are both in a and b those elements are called as intersection set next is complement set complement set is denoted by the symbol bar okay a bar suppose you want to find out the complement of a that is a bar will be x that does not belongs to a that means that the set of elements which are not in set a is called complement of a so this is the set universal set and you have a in, inside you have your set a so the elements which does not belongs to a these elements are called as complement of a okay next is set difference this set difference it is represented by a symbol called minus so this set difference is set of elements which are only in one set but it will not be in other set so for example if you want to find out the set difference between a minus b it can also be represented by a bar b so it will be a it will, uh, the elements which will contain only in a but not in b that is called a minus b suppose if you are writing it for b minus a or b by a it is it the elements which contains only in b but not in a is called as b minus a we can also write this as in mathematical form a by b or a minus b will be equal to x such that x belongs to a and x does not belongs to b and we can write in the mathematical form a minus a intersection b so you have an a okay this is a set you have here b so this entire a minus this this particular part this entire a minus this part will give you this a minus b okay this is a minus a intersection b and what is b minus a it will contain the elements in b and it will not it will not be available in a so we can write b minus b intersection a so these are the operations you can perform in classical set next comes properties of crisp set or classical set 
so the properties plays an important role for obtaining a solution so there are 10 properties or there in crisp set or classical set we will see one by one first is commutative property that is a union b so when you take union of a and b that is same as union of b and a both are same likewise you can do it for intersection also a intersection b value will be same as b intersection a value Coming, coming to associativity property so here we will be having three sets a b and c so when you are taking a b union c and then you are making an union with a the answer will be same as a union b union c likewise you can write it for intersection also a intersection b intersection c will be equal to a intersection b intersection c next is distributive property distributive property is a union b intersection c that means you are bringing this a inside this bracket so you'll get a union b intersection a union c likewise for the inter for this a intersection b union c will be a intersection b union a intersection c this is called as distributive property next is idempotency property what is idempotency property is so when you take union of both the sets both the same sets a union a you will get same a and likewise a intersection a will also be the same a set you will get transitive properties if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of c then we can say a is a subset of c itself this is called as transitivity property next one is identity property identity properties when you take a set when you when you take union with the empty set you will get a itself and when uh, a set is taken intersection with the empty set you will get empty set and likewise a set is taken union with the universal set x you will get x since x is maximum so you are getting x over here suppose a intersection x that means here a is minimum so you are getting a over here this is this property is called as identity property involution property that is when you are taking a double negation double complement these two complement will get cancelled you will get set a alone next is loss of excluded middle this property says that when you are taking the union with a with a's complement you will get the universal set x okay and what is law of contradiction contradiction when you are taking intersection with a and a bar you will get null set okay last is de mockens law a intersection the old bar will be a bar union b bar a union b the old bar is a bar intersection b bar so these are the properties of crisp set so you can use all these properties for solving the problems next coming to the membership function the crisp set we can also there exists a membership function for the crisp set so for example what is membership function is that so we can represent this membership function by a symbol called mu okay using this symbol you can represent this so i am going to use the membership function for the set a so i am writing here membership function set a for the element called x okay so if the element x belongs to the set a means the value of the membership value will be 1 if the x does not belong to a means the value will be 0 okay this is the membership values that as i have told you like the classical set it is nothing but your boolean set okay so this set it will have a value 0 or 1 it will have either 0 or 1 so this is what i am explaining it as membership values so either if the set is, if it is belongs to a set a then we can say the value 1 or otherwise we can say that value to be 0 this is your membership function now i will explain clearly the difference between crisp set and fuzzy set okay crisp set it will define only the value 0 or 1 but coming to the fuzzy set it will have multi values it will it will take the values between 0 and 1 including 0 and 1 like 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 like this this is otherwise called classical set the fuzzy set it specifies a degree to which something is true so for example it will tell you whether it belongs to it suppose it will take a value between 0 and 1 so it will tell you how much it belongs to that particular set that is what it is representing with the value next it shows full membership that means either empty or 1 
here it shows only partial membership like 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 like this it is representing with only partial membership. For example, crisp set if you are asking like uh, if you are if you want to know the per uh, that is like if you want to know a girl's age if you are going to ask uh, her parents they will tell that she is 20 years old they they will tell clearly that she is 20 years old she is 160 centimeter tall so these information are crisp they are precise so we can easily come to a conclusion but suppose if you are going to ask a person's age with some other x person then they will tell that she is about 20 years old she is about 160 centimeter tall so they are not they cannot con come to a conclusion so they are saying it in a they they are not sure but they are saying that she may be 20 years old she may be 160 centimeter tall so these are uh, information what they are providing they are not accurate they are imprecise these information so you can use this information and you can solve the solution so using this fuzzy logic okay last difference is that we can represent in a diagram so for example so i have taken an example for person's height okay so here if you want if you want to say that if the person's height is above 160 then you can say that person is tall the in case of crisp logic or crisp set if the person's height is above 160 the person is tall so i am representing here short to be 0 and tall to be 1 so it will have values only 0 or 1 so if the person's age is below one below 160 it is classified as 0 if the person's age is above 160 it is classified as 1 so if suppose if the person age is 159 then you will classify as short only she will not be classified as tall so the membership value for 159 159 will be zero because it is it comes below 160 suppose the membership value for 161 it is tall it comes above 160 so you are giving a value one likewise you can able to classify the heights but coming to the fuzzy logic what happens is so the same thing short is over here 0 and tall is 1 so this will take the values between 0 and 1 so for example if a person this is a graph you will get there will be a gradual transition from 0 to 1 suppose if the person age is 150 they will be given a value 0.2 okay the person age is 155 it will be given uh, it will be given a value 0 0.8 so the membership value for 150 is 0 0.2 membership value of 159 will be 0 0.8 0.89 something like that membership value of 160 will be 1 so likewise we can able to classify them uh, the values it is not 0 and 1 as in case of boolean logic but here we can able to we can able to give many values over here based upon this particular graph this is called your fuzzy logic okay so in this video i have explained to you clearly about uh, clearly about sets and also i've explained about the types of sets next i've explained on crisp set or classical set properties and operations and lastly i have explained you the difference between crisp set and fuzzy set